Me voy a matar y me tomo Wii. Wii. Me voy a matar y me tomo Wii. Me voy a cagar y me tomo Wii. <laughs> yeah, how's your mic? Is it all right, Lynn? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Your voice is deep as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Barry White. It's sexy, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Have you ever been told that before? Um, no, I've, I've, um, I've been told that my voice is quite soothing. Soothing? Ah. Oh. So that's, uh, that's a good thing. That's positive. You do some of those um, audio books. Yeah, do some voiceover. Yeah. yeah. That really nice, great. isn't it? Just relax. Can you imagine? Take a deep breath. Glenn comes in in the room. So, uh, I, I don't no. think that's how it works, Cedric. <laughs> <laughs> I don't individually go around to each person's house and read a story to you. That's, that's, yeah, that's not how all the other ones go. That's a little bit different. That's it. That would be bizarre. <laughs> yes. <Yeah, it's> <laughs> I just tap on the window. Excuse me, can I, do you want me to read a story to you? Yeah. <laughs> you press play and all of a sudden you're like, yeah. hello. Yeah, my magic, I appear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brilliant. that will be it. <laughs> Oh, that would be nice though. The voice, hello, with crisp. We should. We need a story for yeah. you to read. We, we need a lot of them, isn't it? Once upon a time, there was a man named Glenn. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> ah, carry on. Glenn. More, 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 more. We want more. Tell us a bit about you, Glenn. <laughs> yeah, lovely to meet you. Anyway, lovely no, no. to meet you, Glenn, and welcome to the mic. No, thank you very much for having me here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming, Glenn. It's, it's an honour for us. You yeah. Know? I've, I don't think I've ever spoken to uh, an ex-mayor or mayor in my life. Yeah, we, we so are, we're all over the place. We, we're yeah. hidden in plain sight. We kind of pop up. And, oh, uh, and that, that sounds <laughs> mysterious. <laughs> no, yeah. but it, it's, um, that is a great experience. It was uh, it's getting on to eight, nine years since I was mayor. Yeah. Oh, really? Um, and it's great that I still have people come up to me in the street and say, hey, I, I know you, you were mayor. Yeah, Go yeah. to different events. And, yeah, um, yeah. I went to one place and there was a guy who's telling me how he remembered me going to his school. So right. yeah. he'd gone to school. Gone to university is now in employment and had all that, that time happen. So it was, yeah. it, was, it was good. It was a it was an amazing experience. I'm what is a mayor though? But what is the, what, what does a mayor do? do? What yeah. They do? So basically, <laughs> the mayor is like Ipswich's first citizen. So you um okay. you the representative of the queen in the town. You yeah. also the, the king now. Okay. Um, you yeah. Uh, you you thank people who've made great achievements. So if right. someone has done something for the town, you get a chance to invite them up to the mayor's parlor and, and um. Uh, Give them a, a tea, or, or have a meet their family and say oh. thank you for what they've yeah. done. Um, greet foreign dignitaries that come to the area, and oh, also wow. meet people who've made amazing achievements. Like uh, I met a, a lady; it was her 111th birthday. So I got Whoa. to go to her 111th birthday party. Wow! So, so she was a child in the First World War. She had her That's own crazy. children in the Second World War. And <laughs> what First she, World War. Yeah, so what she'd seen in her life was yeah. amazing. Unreal. And, and as I was talking to her, she was telling me, she was like, um, yeah, I'm, I'll go and meet my, my daughter and all later on. Um, the old dear, she's had an accident, she's hurt her hip. And it's just yeah. like Brilliant. So <laughs> she's, I mean, yeah, so like her daughter in law is obviously an older, yeah, elderly yeah. woman. Elderly yeah, it's yeah. crazy. But, um, you do, you get to meet. So, I, I mean, I met. People are like at that end of the scale, I got to go to a lot of schools and speak to young people. So yeah, that must have been for me. It was quite important because I'm uh, uh, I'm dyslexic. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm of mixed heritage. Uh, I grew up originally in a, in a, a council estate, so I yeah. wanted to show that people when they look at the mayor, they see like yeah. this grand. So you think yeah. you're going to be like this really well spoken, but you yeah. don't so understand uh, working uh, class people, yeah. and you exactly. know, you've so never I'm really had a real life, and you've been handed everything right. on a plate. People assume that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I wanted to show that um, people from, from, even though I look like a Victorian gentleman with my beard, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I wanted to show that people from any background <laughs> yeah. could get involved in politics yeah. and, can, yeah. and can do that. And so if I could go on to be mayor, um, someone might sit there and um, yeah. not necessarily get involved in politics, but they might say, well, what's achievable for him? Perhaps my dreams are achievable for me. So I could yeah. be an architect, I could be an engineer. Yeah. Just, just showing that yeah. you can you can. So when you things. say you're mixed... Um, Ooh. Mixed heritage. Yeah. So yeah. my mum my is uh, white British and my yeah. uh, my biological <coughs> father is from Jamaica. Oh, oh wow. Oh, so okay. He, he cool. Me as a, as a <laughs> I was raised by my mum and my adopted dad who is of Anglo-Indian descent. So wow. I've had no, so very culturally all kind of cultures yeah. uh, you know, growing up. And, uh, so yeah. Joe Rastafari. <laughs> <laughs> we can go that way today, isn't it? I don't know. I think are you are, are you Muslim? 
No, no, you Muslim, no. No, you're not. What's your religion? Uh, I'm, a, I'm an atheist. I don't yeah, have Yeah, atheist. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big up to atheists. Oh, That's me too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> me enough, too. People, um, because I've got, I've got brown skin and a beard, people do make assumptions about um, me being a Muslim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to um, Barry St. Edmunds. There was an event when I was mayor, and um, that was when the new bishop was being was being made up. And so I'm standing in this church, and this gentleman speaking to me. He's going, oh, it must be a, a new experience for you being in church. I was like, yeah. oh, I've been in church before. Yeah. And he was like, well, being that you're a Muslim, I was like, no, I'm not a Muslim. No, you're not. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, but yeah, people do yeah. make Your beard has grown, though. It, it has, yeah. It's, it's a... It's a it's work filled of out. patience and a work of art. No, I, I do. Yeah. But I, I think I think today, nowadays, and yeah, yeah. So we call it 21st it's fashion. century. It's a fashion, it isn't is. it? It, it is. Do you know what? The products you can buy for your beard are yeah. unreal. It is. There's, a, um, there's a new shop opened up in Israel called Beard Manners, um, which do like beard bars no. and beard things. Okay. Uh, I popped in and had a chat with the guy there who runs an absolutely fantastic guy. Yeah. Also, um, he's doing some stuff around men's mental health as well. Oh, yeah. wow. And um, yeah, it's just, it's just great. It's just uh, yeah. it's great to have that kind of place in there. But, yeah, oh, beards, like old school barbershop type kind feeling, of like of community. Feeling, yeah. exactly. and so that's exactly. right. It's, it's more than just going in there to, um, as a product. It's about actually conversations and talking about yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. And men do have a tendency to keep things bottled up inside i mean i, I know i've had um with my challenges i've had i've had my my issues around mental health so i, I know think I mental have, health was a big challenge for you isn't it yeah i mean I'd, um i've had depression in the past and, yeah uh, i've been open about that but yeah. um after i suffered my my spinal cord injury um so two years ago yeah um i had a, it's just a freak occurrence my my disc in my neck crushed my spinal cord right um um, How did that happen? It's, it's just a freak thing. I just, wow. I just started off, I got like pins and needles in my hands. Then yeah. I, my body just started to rapidly deteriorate. Um, I, I kept falling over. So my mum and my stepdad took me to the hospital. Yeah. Uh, they done an MRI. He, uh, sorry, you've got a mosquito in there. Oh, yeah, on the back of your head. Wow, it's massive. Okay. Are we allowed to kill it? <laughs> let, let, let it go free. Let it, let it, let it. Oh, wow. Of, um, that was trying to get through. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> How professional. Do you know what? I can't watch that. Just Sorry. take that's, from you. That's, that's fine. It's, um, I just obviously attract bugs. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, yeah, as I was, I was saying, yes. so like my mum and stepdad took me to um, the hospital. This was during COVID, so they literally had to like wheel me in. I was yeah. taken away. And, oh, um, God, not a good time for it yeah, to so happen. Yeah, so they couldn't come in with me. Yeah. And, uh, they'd done an MRI, and they said... Okay, you're what we call a, a gold patient. Um, if you don't operate in the next 24 hours, you could be paralysed from the neck down. Oh, my, so oh my like, goodness. Oh, okay. You were so, um, terrified, I can yeah, imagine. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know what was going to happen. So they, they go in through the front, um, remove the disc, but it's, um, it has left me permanently disabled. So um, I yeah. don't have oh, sorry full sensation from the, the knees down. Um, I struggle with um, dexterity and strength. So I'm, yeah. Um, yeah. I will never be able to walk unaided. I have two crutches that I use at the moment. Yeah, so I use yeah. a wheeled walker, um, which, yeah. I, which I call Blue Fun because it's a punch <laughs> of blue color. Um, to keep it around. But it's, like been, it. it's been an eye-opening experience um, yeah. navigating life as as someone who's disabled, knowing that uh, every aspect of my life is is now harder. Um, yeah. for everything from opening jars and yeah. bottles to to going to a restaurant, yeah. and they're not having um, facilities. Uh, yeah, facilities yeah. for you go to. Uh, Going Especially, on the yeah. on the train. Um, my, my son lives in Bristol. I uh, had a, a train uh, journey to go to him, and they they um they changed it to a, a, a bus service. Yeah. Part oh of yeah. it. So I asked at the, the station. I was like, oh, okay. So these buses are disabled exits, and they're like, yeah, yeah, of course they are. So <laughs> yeah, um, the train I goes. All buses <laughs> were now. The thing is, they well, forget who they're speaking to. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I get to um, I think it was Mark's Tale or, or somewhere like that. Yeah. And I get off the train, go to get on the bus, um, and I look at it. I was like. Doesn't look the same with access. No. And so I asked the driver, and they're like, no, nah, it's not. And so I had to sit for 45 minutes in a car park. Right. Waiting. They went and got a bus which was the same with access. That's oh. unreal. We went to a, like, go along to another station, get there, and the station's on the other side of the bridge. And I was like, oh how do I cross the bridge? Are they steps? Uh, up yeah. To get <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, how, how do I get to the other platform? And they were like, oh, yeah. So I had to go in the back of a works van, be taken wow. around an estate, state, driven oh around this area. You couldn't, you couldn't, couldn't ride that. Outside. That's so like, um, honestly, like, a, like a, some sort of farce or something, it, it isn't is, it? It is, but that's, that's, what it, that's what it is. That's what we, we face as disabled yeah. people. I mean, I, I recently saw a video um, which, which went viral where a, a woman was basically had to bum herself up the stairs. She's a wheelchair yeah. user yeah. because uh, the, the lift was broken. And I've had oh. that as well. Like elevators and lifts going out. It's... 
I think but we take it for granted, and, yeah. and I'm sure at some point in your life you may have taken it yeah. for granted. But you know, it I guess it gives you a different look. It, it does. On it life. definitely gives you a different perspective. And perspective. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it is um, everything. I have to like where I go everywhere. I have to plan ahead to make sure. Yeah. I'm here. So I have to look at but how I'm going to get there. What's going to happen when I get there? And it, it does expect um, does. Um, impact your mental health. Yeah. As I, I said, sometimes I've Definitely. been to a, a family function and I'm like, okay, I'm in this hall. Where's the toilets? Yeah. How do I get there? Yeah. How do I go to this yeah. place? How do I go to yeah. that? And it, it does and make Especially when it's a place that you've never been before. Yeah. 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 And, exactly. I, and I think, like, you know, it's you're prob- obviously a p- very proud man and you don't want to feel like yeah. you know, you have to be always asking fe- people no. for help and it, you yeah, know it I, it, I, I guess that maybe you've changed in that way now you just uh, oh, you definitely think it, it brings a level of vulnerability when um when i had my surgeries um my surgeon spoke to me afterwards and said that you like your life will change it won't be the same yeah. he explained that the process is very much like the grief process yeah. where like part of you has gone but also he said about having to depend on other people he said yeah. that you've right. given a lot of your life helping other people and he said that you will need people to help you yeah and uh, i have i've been really fortunate in that i've got a a, a good family network around yeah. me i've got friends which have stepped up and yeah and helped but it, it is i mean it, um, as we we said about the, the whole mental health as well i was yeah. uh, also diagnosed with ptsd ptsd when they what from finding out this information um, yeah from from the um yeah. from dealing with the, the injury and yeah. uh it, it didn't manifest until a year later. Yeah. When they first spoke about it, PTSD, I was like, what? That's something you get if you've been in a traumatic accident. But it could accident. be anything. And I was like, it this could be yeah, childhood could trauma or yeah. anything. Is that, I was like, this, this wasn't a, like a, a dramatic accident, was it? But, no. but then a year later, I started to um, relive the, like the falls I had in the street. And it was yeah. so vivid. I could literally, I'd lay in bed and I could feel the pain in my shoulder where yeah. I hit the ground. Right. I could taste the grit. In my mouth from where really? my face is smashed. So it was it was hard. It was really, yeah. really difficult. But Frightening. But thankfully I've had did it had counselling and been able yeah. to do that's, through that. It's good that you've reached out to people and you've accepted help yeah. and you've yeah. been able to. And, and some people feel like they don't want to go and talk about themselves and talk about their problems and how what like, advice would you give to people that well, exactly how about the anxiety though? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's, it brings it was, all the you know yeah. you can you struggle to face other people, you know, yeah. you d- don't want to be. It was. I people. mean, I, I'm yeah. a very, um, I'm a sociable person, and yeah. um, I enjoy um, mixing with people and talking to people. I'm quite right. outgoing. And there were times where I just wanted to shut myself off from the world. If I was going down the r- street and I saw someone I recognised, I'd put my head down and cross over because I didn't want yeah. to have that contact and speak to people. Yeah. It, it crushed me as, as to who I was, and I felt like yeah. I wasn't me. Yeah. It took me a long while to get to the point where I would say. I'm thankful for what I have rather than regretting and feeling sad about what I've lost. Yeah. That's right. I, yeah. I have lost a lot of me and I've lost a lot of what I, what I feel made up me, but I've, I'm still, I'm still glad. I'm, yeah, I'm exactly. Still, yeah, uh, yeah. We've got a course. Yeah. 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 But it's, um, yeah. that's yeah. why it's so important. Cookie, man. When, when people are dealing with these things, they're so important to speak up and yeah. to get help. Yeah. We, we do keep these things bottled in, inside. Yeah. And that's, that's why it's important. I think especially it. us as men, we, that's what I know. we, we, we don't, say we don't that. talk about those things. No. It is. I think there's a certain social stigma around it. Still, we don't crazy. Yeah. Because we are a lot more open, I think, as a society to lots of different issues. And I think the fact that people are talking more and more about this in the media, it's helpful because yeah. people yeah. realise that actually there are other people going through the same kind of things as me yeah. and Indeed. it's actually and okay. I'm, I'm, I'm quite terrible for oversharing, I think. On, on social media, <laughs> yeah. I, I go love into that. Lots, <laughs> lots of details about yeah. like what I'm doing and I, I post a lot. But the way I see that is if someone else sees that and thinks, oh... Yeah. That's Glenn, and he's going through that. Yeah. I, I'm not alone in suffering from this. I'm yeah. not alone. That's, that's You've helped that's someone. That's yeah, what that's what do. we're lacking at. Yeah, yeah. As yeah. men, you know, sometimes we'll bottle everything up. Yeah. And then we will struggle to, to just to share. Yeah. Or to speak to and someone. And then that makes everything worse. And inside of you, yeah. there's a lot going on. Yeah. And you, and then it can lead to things that, you know, but are the terrible. The worst part of it, I don't know about, you know, you, Glenn, we have that thing as men. We feel like um, they they would think I'm weak. 
Yeah, you yeah. don't want to look they weak. They see or, me, they think yeah. I'm very weak. Exactly. So it's like the, the social stigma around it is where yeah. um, somehow that speaking up or seeking help is seen as a sign of weakness, but it's, it's not. It takes strength. Yeah, it without a doubt. To, to speak up. And uh, uh, it does. It is. I think that um, lots of us in all facets of our lives are, are struggling with different things. It, it has been yeah. hard these last yeah, few can years. Imagine. Oh, across the board. Not, yeah. not just for me, but for, for for people across the board, it's been very yeah. difficult time. More especially, oh, yeah, you, you were out there helping people. Yeah. yeah. Now it's me, you, you want that kind of little bit of it, help. It did. You know? I mean, my, before my injury, my job was I worked as a, a support worker, um, yeah. helping homeless people. Right. And for me, it was um, being able to make a, a tangible difference in someone's life, being able to to see someone who's been in such a dark place and then turn it around and help them move forward with their life yeah. was, yeah. was such amazing. a, yeah, a yeah, yeah. feeling of validation. And yeah, definitely. to have that taken from me, I, I, I felt I was, I was good at my job. And um, it, was, it was hard. It was, it was part of my, my identity. But yeah. once again, um, just uh, last week, I was going through town and I bumped into someone I used to support. He came up to me and he, he shook yeah. my hand. He was, he was pleased to see me and he was yeah. telling me about how, he was really proud to say about how well he's doing with his life, yeah. where, where he's living now and yeah. what, what he's doing. So it's like... That's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's great. You've to, made a difference. Exactly. It's great yeah. to have those wins. Uh, that, 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 yeah. feeling, yeah. that feeling that you know that you there are people someone. that I have helped it, them. It's because believe me, working in that industry, it can be a thankless task at times. And you can have yeah. some people who... Don't appreciate the help at the time. Yeah, and yeah. You they don't realise, uh, like you say, they don't. You know, they d it's not appreciating it. But l later down the line, yeah. they go, yeah, yeah. And um, we, yeah, we get Actually. called lots of lots of interesting names to our oh face. Dear. Yeah. Yeah. Oh <laughs> dear! Come on, Claire, you gotta yeah. tell me one, <laughs> just <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no. I think we are, we are allowed to say it, isn't it? <laughs> no, no, I've, yeah, I've been called the c word a lot. A uh, oh. yeah, so, uh, c word. See you next Tuesday. Yes. yes oh, exactly. right. what is it? <laughs> See you next Tuesday. It, it's a C word. Yeah. yeah. See, see you next Tuesday. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, got, we got called that a lot. But, um, right. No, but you, you have to but have fixed skin in that kind of industry. You and have and to, it is, yeah. it's about these people, um, they have reasons why they don't trust authority figures. Yeah. And um, yeah. No one chooses to be homeless as a lifestyle choice. And no. Matter what some people say. And there's lots of trauma and things which have led to that. And so yeah. it's, it's breaking Without through those barriers Without trying to get them to open up. Sorry, Glenn. The thing is, how could you please everybody when you're in that position as a mayor? Yeah. Oh, you're uh, not, you, no, you, not everyone's going to like you or agree. Is it possible to please? No, I mean, that's, um, going back to, to mayor, that's, um, you're, you're supposed to be politically neutral and um, you are trying to yeah. walk a, a bouncing line as to not being overtly political which is is difficult as really difficult a because you and, and, yeah. and a human yeah. being yeah exactly and yeah yeah um, everybody sees you sees like oh now today my m i've got to get some money yeah, yeah. or well <laughs> yeah but the, what they don't want what you yeah. don't want to do is is influence people's opinions to go in one way or the other you've that's why you've probably got to be quite neutral yeah when you're mayor you, yeah you you do have to be politically neutral, yeah, because you're, you're chairing the, the full council meeting yeah. um, when they're making decisions. And, um, yeah, it's, it's a matter of, um, I like to think that I treated people from, from both parties that, well, with respect over the, the do time. Do you have to be that clever, then, to be a mayor? Um, well, I, I became mayor. So <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, no, it's, Are um, you still working? Like, when you're mayor, do you still have a full-time yeah, job? I, I yeah, I did. I had, that, was a, that was a hell of a juggling act as well. I was working full-time. Uh, I had to like shift my hours around and take lots of time off to do it. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, you have to be a councillor first. Yeah. Uh, and then you're put forward by your, your group and then the rest of the councillors vote, vote. vote on you. So, yeah, yeah. So you were that good then. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody would get. Can is, you it just, is it just one year? Is yeah, that, you do, is it, do it for one year so you don't become corrupt with power. And so I don't. Uh, ah. run, a, run a dictatorship of me on, on top of Crochet's <laughs> mansion with my, yeah, my yeah. olive drabs. Uh, that's an interesting that, that, thing. Yeah. So that's why. That's it, the reason. Uh, well, it, it goes back to um, uh, like many, many years ago, the whole thing with um, the town, instead of a mayor, it used to be run by um, a strange enough called bailiffs. They yes, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. They, they used to um, line their own pockets, and it's a yeah, whole thing yeah, yeah. rotten burrows. So um, it ended up, um, it, it became mayors, which were doing it. And yeah, you, you do it for, for one year. Yeah. yeah. Usually, you like the deputy year mayor for the, the year after. Wow. Okay, so, you were, so, you, were <laughs> so you were deputy <laughs> after? 
Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. So you okay. support the the new mayor. Yeah, of yeah. That. God, that must have taken out of you when I was talking to you at the beginning about me not sleeping. That must have been a lot of things going on in your mind. A lot, a very busy it, it lifestyle. Is, it is full on, and uh, yeah, yeah it, it does. It does take a lot of engagement um, that you you go through. So uh, the thing I could imagine, the thing I could imagine, he yeah. he used to do the mayoring, and he you used to be an LV. Insurer? Yeah, I worked at LV at the time. Yeah. LV insurer. How did you jog around all the? Because yeah. that's a lot of work. No, they, they were my my employer were really supportive to me. Um, so I, I would go into work um, like an early shift and leave off um, early, uh, work longer days and have more days, yeah. more hours off oh during right. the day. So, so so juggle stuff around and yeah. uh, take. That's good on them, isn't it? To support yeah. you, isn't it? Yeah, they they were they were really good. Yeah, because insurance, it's, um, it's a lot of work yeah. as well. Yeah, but work. I guess it is quite a flexible, a quite a flexible job, isn't it, insurance? Yeah. 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 But uh, th- what surprises me, Glenn, is you working with your son. Yes, well... Um, Where, how, the, how do you do that? Yeah, what we did is um, quite often... The, the mayor has a, because a in, in politics, they say they don't want you to bring your families. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but often you have like you know wives that support the you know yeah. members yeah, of parliament or husbands. So or as a as a divorcee, I was um, I was single at the time, so um, I didn't have uh, someone to be a mayoress. So we thought it'd be good to get my son involved. Yeah. yeah. And, um, so he was, uh, I think he was sixteen at the time. Wow. Um, so he was he was very young. Did he have a twin? Uh, my my son was one of twins, but sadly we lost his brother oh, um, during the sorry, um, sorry um, to hear that. during the pregnancy. Yes, yeah, so, so um, that actually impacted one of the charities we supported. So when oh, when right. you become okay. mayor, you get to support um, some charities and uh, raise issues. So my son, that's great. Um, when my when his mother was pregnant, we we lost his brother, and my son yeah. was born um, premature. And uh, he only weighed three pound when he was born. Wow. And the special care baby unit, they, they saved his life. Yeah, oh so they're great. There was a Sunrise charity, which is a charity for the yeah. special care. So we support them as my, my charity. As yeah. right. So we, uh, we got to raise some money for them, got uh-huh. to um, publish what they were doing. And That's I got, uh, got to take Clinton back to the hospital and meet, yeah. um, meet staff there and meet and some people yeah. who were yeah. yeah. doing things. Yeah, who have helped him, It was great. That's amazing. But it was, it was brilliant to get my son involved. Involved yeah. as well. But it's good because he's got a young influence and a different look at life. Yeah, so yes, that's we did. We had, we had different organisations contact us off the back of the fact that, that Clinton was... Um, was my, my consort, my, my mayor junior. So yeah, yeah. And it was that's a good, great. That's great. great achievement for him, for him as well. Me, I grew up without a father. Yeah. So I don't have, I don't know the love of having a father. So it's kind of like, you know, going through your bio and seeing you working with your son. Yeah. It's like, oh, your great I influence. want to do this. It's yeah. my, my relationship with my son is so important to me. Um, yeah. I grew up, uh, my biological father... Yeah. Um, he kind of came in and out of my life. Um, I didn't have a great deal to deal with him in the, in the yeah. early years. And m- right. my, my adopted father was was the one who raised me and was there for me. And he, yeah. he sadly uh, passed away uh, from so cancer so. at the age of 44. Oh, wow. um, very young. So for me, just, uh, yeah, my, my, my son, um, even when me and his mum divorced, I still... That was 10 years, isn't it? 10 years of marriage. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so even after me and, um, me and his mum we still had such a strong we still done things together and put Clinton first so yeah. Yeah. shout out we, to you we that's brilliant that you can keep ah, that come relationship come on Glenn, you yeah. give me a high five for yeah. that yeah. one man. shout but, out um, to you great. yeah and so um, like Sarah so she's uh, she's a credit for the way that my son has raised yeah. um, like between us we've we done yeah. Uh, yeah. some teamwork some good work and I'm, I'm very proud of my son yeah. and you say he's living in Bristol is yeah, that right yeah, yeah. He, he lives in Bristol he works for the, the NHS his job is I think the easiest way to describe it is he, he audits uh, pharmacies and oh uh, wow okay so make sure oh. they've got what they need check yeah. that yeah. there's enough That's going yeah. to yeah, yeah. Um, it's a I, I went to visit him in the summer there, and it's such a beautiful city. It's oh, a real, wow. real yeah, nice it vibe is. to it. And it's nice to see your son doing very well, yeah. isn't it? And getting the good chance that you have taught him yeah. how to. I'm, I'm so proud of the young man that he's grown into. He's, um, yeah, he's, he's, you want your you want your children to be like you version 0.20. Yeah. And yeah. be like an improved yeah. version of yourself. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And uh, that's what To I put right like. any wrongs that you made. Yeah. You know? I need to go and whoop my father then. I need to go <laughs> and find him. And uh, <laughs> give him a... I think fathers, <laughs> yeah. some fathers have got a lot I, to I, answer I've for. I've never grew up with that. I don't know the love of no. having a father. 
I've no. never seen him. But you've you've got children of your, yourself, haven't yeah. you? So you know the love of being a father. Yeah. yeah. And, and being there, there for your children. Yeah. And so um, you've also, you're, I'm, I'm making massive assumptions here, yeah. Yeah. by not having that influence in your life, you've learned what is wrong and yeah. the wrong way to do it. Yeah. And so you, you don't want to repeat. So you've put it right. Just, so you're, you're changing that, yeah. that circle and doing yeah. the right thing. It's trying to find it a way. It doesn't mean you, you yeah. we, I mean, no one knows how, even if they've been raised, you know, with a father and mother present. We don't, we don't know. We still have kids uh, and you, then you then have no idea gonna, what you're doing. And uh, <laughs> okay, a parent is, is kind of winging it. She's finding yeah. your way. It really is. Yeah. I know. I often say I, that. I, me and my I husband often say they to, hand this baby over to you when you come out the hospital. And you're I like, need what to go and this? find Can you. Him. Someone help to, me. <laughs> How do you do? Oh, what did you do to me? <laughs> 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 Not promoting that. No, I wouldn't promote violence. No, no, but, no. You know, yeah, but, <laughs> maybe well, you get a free pass. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. But yeah. What's um, your greatest achievement, do you think, that as mayor? What do you think is your, your greatest achievement? Uh, greatest achievement as mayor? Um, I think one of my... One of my fondest memories. I mean, my, my greatest achievement, I think, was was being able to sort of break some stereotypes and show um, a different side of the mayoralty and what's involved. Yeah. But one of my fondest memories is uh, it was a gentleman called Howard Farrow. He was a World War Two veteran, uh, D Day veteran, and he'd um, one of his children had lost his medals playing in the garden when they were young. Oh my goodness! And we'd done a Armed Forces Day event. And um, he, we invited him along as a, as a guest. And what he yeah. didn't know is that someone had actually got him replacement medals. Yeah. Oh. And so we got to present them Brilliant. to him. And the, the look on his face was fantastic. He was over the moon, and I bet. Yeah, it was brilliant. And I got a chance yeah. to, um, to know him and his family over the years. Yeah, yeah. And um, we invited him to, um, to Westbourne, my old school. He, he gave a talk to a couple of students doing a history course. Yeah. And so he spoke about his experience in in World War Two, right, wow. and uh, just seeing these the, the these young students looking up and in awe at, at what he was saying. He had, he had a he was very self depreciating, had a great sense of humor. Yeah, yeah. And uh, seeing that response and that reaction yeah. was fantastic. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's sadly no longer with us, but he's um, yeah, he's, he's a credit to his family. Yeah. Because a lot of people um, um, World War it means a lot to them because that's where they stand for their countries, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah especially to fight. You could have. You can easily have depression if you lose something that you attached oh to. Oh yeah, you, definitely. You know? When he's you know worked so hard and been yeah. through so much, and those is, that and mean a lot to him. Going back to what we we're saying about people not being able to speak about what they they went through, you yeah. find lots of families because mental health wasn't understood then. Lots of people who had family which served in World War One and World War Two, they they didn't know how to speak. They often didn't speak at all no. and just kept it all bottled up inside. Yeah. And some yeah. of them unfortunately took other routes, went down the, the bottle and had. Yeah, um, destructive ways of dealing with it rather than actually um, being able to speak. That's why it is yeah. so important to be able to to speak up. We yeah. need to foster. Times were very different, weren't they? Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Because it was yeah. known as like shell yeah. shock, and yeah. it, rather than post traumatic stress, and yeah. people didn't. There weren't. Pe there wasn't actually anyone to talk to really. There wasn't that no. facility out there. But you know, we're lucky we have that now. It's just that people need to reach out mm. more. And like you say, it's not just war veterans it's not people that have had these things accidents and things happen it's anyone yeah. and even yeah. myself you know giving birth my s the second time <laughs> i had post-traumatic stress from that Did it was awful. You? yeah it was really really awful and i felt like so afraid of doing that again that it meant that when i was remarried I, it took me a very long time to be persuaded to perhaps have, an, to have another, another child. child. Oh, that's, that's I was so afraid of that pain and like what might happen to me or the child or yeah. you know. So any trauma, I think, is so important that people can talk about it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. so important. Yeah. And there are groups for so many different things that have happened. There are so many people that have been through similar things to others there's always someone there's a lot going on here Looks, it sounds <laughs> like there's some noise. football <laughs> celebrations <laughs> who's some playing going on the background. I'm, not sure, I'm not sure who's playing I know Ipswich were 3-3 three, three last night to Hull I don't know if you follow foot See, I'm <laughs> football I'm not much of a, a normal football <laughs> fan uh, I, no. I love American football uh, I Oh. I, I played um, for the Eastwich Cardinals. Yeah, you look quite team. like a, a strong, <laughs> strong guy. He's a strong so, uh, man. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah, I played for 10 years for them from the age of 14 to, to 24. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I follow American football on the um, on television. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. I'm a fan of the Raiders. So, uh, yeah. yeah. I can't I, say I know a lot about America. I, I don't know a lot about football in general. I only follow it. There's a lot of people doing it, isn't it? In, in, 
in England. Probably it's, not. It's, it's probably bro- getting more popular. It was it was huge in the eighties, and there is uh, there's, there's quite a few local teams, and uh, yeah, there's the they, they have international games come over and play in um, in Tottenham Stadium. And yeah. Oh wow. Like fill up. So uh, it's just a great atmosphere. I, I yeah, just fell yeah, in love yeah. with it as a kid. Just the whole razzmatazz and something yeah, about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, I just enjoyed I enjoyed playing it for years. It was, it was yeah. good fun. Yeah. So as mayor, did you get to to meet any? Ipswich football players or um, members of the team at yeah, the time. Yeah, I, I did. I met a, a couple. We went to, uh, I went to a couple of Ipswich Town games, uh, yeah. which was quite nice. I went to one in, in Ipswich, and I got to go to one in Milton Keynes, representing Ipswich there. Okay, yeah. yeah. And um, I, at the cinema, we opened the when 4DX came in. Oh, wow, yeah, some, yeah, yeah. Is this that like Cineworld or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 4DX? So, oh, it's, it's hilarious. So it's like uh, you watch hilarious. the film and you're in a chair and the chair moves around with you. And oh, so funny. Okay. So, um, yeah, so okay. anything that happens on the film, it happens that's in your right. seat. That wind if it, if blows in your face. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If it's raining, and you get water sprayed on you. Oh, that's like a 4 that, so. so funny. I booked yeah. it by accident when we went to watch the, like, the, least, the most recent Born quite a while ago. And then we started moving. And I was thinking, no wonder it was so expensive. <laughs> what is going on? It, I couldn't stop laughing. I watched the, um, uh, when the first Dune movie came out. I went to the yeah. show in there, and the guy next yeah. to me, I'm assuming he didn't realize because he was sitting there with his <laughs> massive, great big hot dog, and he was like <laughs> trying to eat his hot dog. And all of a sudden, he started jumping like himself in the eye. Yeah, but no, I, I got to um, I got to open yeah. the uh, the screen, and yeah. some Mitchell's Town players were invited along to that. So I got oh, to cool. the yeah, yeah. And, and you met Ed Sheeran. Yes, yes, we did. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that was quite cool. So he was um, that's when he got his his honorary um, degree, um, and so he was using the mayor's parlor as his kind of green room before that. Okay. And yeah. um, he asked to meet me and my son, and so I said, say thank you for letting me use the parlour. So my son was in, um, he was in Essex at the time, in, uh, at university, he started yeah. at the University yeah. of Essex. And um, so I phoned him up and was like, um, yeah, we've been invited to meet Ed June. Do you reckon you'll be able to come along? Yeah, I'll be there. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Yeah, drop everything. Drop everything. So, um, no, it was but great. How, how is he like then as a person? He, he was he was absolutely lovely. He was really, um, uh, really personable. Um, he had his mum, his dad, yeah. and, and his, I think one of his grandparents were there. Right. Yeah, yeah. And he was just chatting away. He was, he was chatting away to my son, talking about like uh, music. Yeah, He's seen in its switch and, yeah. and, and things like that. And yeah. uh, is no, he, he just came across really nice. like reachable, like as a guy, you can go to him, shake his hand. Yeah, he, he was really laid back, really approachable, and just seemed like a, oh, okay. a nice guy. So uh, oh, yeah, right. it, was, it was good. So did you? So you met him because you were g- presenting him with something? No, because he was he was being presented with something by the University of um, of Suffolk, and he was using. The mayor's parlour, which is in okay. town. Oh, right. So okay. he kind of asked. So to he, come he asked you. So he's using your parlour. Because he was using, using the room. He the says, room. Like, uh, I suppose it's and like Sharon asked you. Out of politeness. Uh, uh, I would have said no. Go on then. <laughs> <laughs> I would have said no. Who are he's you? He's a cruel guy. <laughs> cruel and guy, no, he, this one. Um, he came across really well. He came across yeah. a nice guy with, yeah. a, with a nice ground of family. So it was, yeah. it was good. Oh, that's oh, brilliant, is not it? Yeah, that's yeah, good. Yeah. But I was still said no. I know you. Cedric, he's mean. I was going to ask you. I going to say, who are you? You know. No, what? yeah. I'm, I'm the mayor. He's quite, he's quite a distinctive I, looking person. Yeah, but I often look at with, you know, with all the success he's had. I wonder if he looks back and think, Carl. Oh. One of my greatest memories is meeting that Glenn. Okay. Yeah. I know. I'm really grateful that he let yeah. me have his room. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I think that's. I think he thinks about that daily. In my mind, he does. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I tell you, he's. Um, I think we. I've never met him, but I, a lot of people they say he's a really nice guy. Yeah, yeah he did. He came across nice, and yeah. that's that was a great thing. We got to meet um, so many amazing people. We. Uh, I remember another guy we met. So this guy was been involved in the the Eastridge Park runs. Yeah. Uh, Park yeah, 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 one of the people who start, started those. And um, he'd been diagnosed with, with MS and he wasn't able to, to, to carry on any, anymore. Yeah. And so we um, we would give, we, we invited him up to the mayor's parlour for, for tea and we were like basically giving him a, a like a, a commemorative uh, special coin as a, a yeah. thank you for all he'd done. Yeah. And this guy, he originally came from the London East End, I think. He was quite a confident character. Yeah. Right? And quite um, <laughs> confident. Like bridging on arrogance or just oh, super just confident, so he, was, he was a lovely guy, but he had a lot of confidence about him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could see that he was great in, in social situations. Yeah. And um, we gave him that. And he was, it was fascinating because he was speechless. And it seemed to really, really right. impact him. 
this fact that we gave him. So that yeah. was that was lovely to do because this is a guy who's helped so many people and, and, yeah. and got something yeah. going in its switch. And it was brilliant just to say thanks and be yeah. the, the person who's actually getting a chance to say yeah. thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's really great, isn't it? Yeah, because there are pe- so many people out there who are always doing things for other people and yeah. actually it's that's important. That's, 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 that's our ethos here really to say thank you to people all the time that are kind of doing things for others. The thing this is quite often yeah. you, um, in, this, in this world of social, social media is, is good and bad, but quite often you see the negative comments and people yeah. moaning about the town, talking the town down all yeah. the time. Yeah. There are so many amazing people beavering away, working yeah. behind yeah. the scenes, helping others, um, putting themselves forward yeah. Uh, yeah. To, to really push things and, and make things better for their, for their fellow man and their yeah. community. Yeah. And that's, that's just great to see. It it's just, I, it's I, good do you know what? I think the, the thing is about Ipswich, I don't know if you feel the same. I feel like I've, I haven't lived here my whole life, but I think since I've been here, it's been through so many ups and downs. So many times when you know, I've thought, you know, when when the club, the Ipswich Town Club were going up, you know, it became more popular, more money came to the town. They started building the quay and, you know, bringing more, influ- you know, yeah. people with a bit more, um, I'd say, a bit more affluent, a bit, you know, and, and yeah. so money started coming in and, it, and it, you know, it was, it was busier and it was, it seemed fun. And then it went through kind of a bit of a lull. And that was a time when I think there was a few murders. Do you remember the... Yeah, the yeah. The prostitute murders, and, yeah, and yeah. then it got like a really bad, like a, a, a cloud right, that kind of hit the town, it, and it went it downhill I mean, a lot. Ipswich has had lots of challenges over the years, <laughs> yeah. and um, yeah, it, and it now has it's like crime, like knife crime, and people are looking at it. so but many the, in town. As well. The thing yeah. is, it's um, it's not just Ipswich; it's across the board. And yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And so, when you look at the stats, uh, is it which any less safe than other places? Um, so, but the. F- the thing is, there are people who are trying to, to make a difference. Yeah. And uh, when you hear people, talk, when they talk about like, oh, town centre is a no-go area or don't go along Norwich Road. Yeah. Yeah. I, I go to the Norwich Road, all the time. I go to the Hive regularly. The Hive, yeah. The hive. Where's yeah. the yeah. Hive? It's on it's Norwich, Norwich Road. Road. It's like a community hub. Um, yeah. You go there. Because it always looks so much fun when I'm driving that way. I always <laughs> yeah. think, I'm, it's I, alive. It's I alive. I honestly say that that place, um, it's like <clears throat> medicine for my soul. Yeah. Yeah. There's been times where I felt like, um, disengaged and disinfected and like oh man this is this is terrible and I go there and it's just people who are like just a like yeah. contagious energy of people really? trying to make a difference and trying to change things yeah, there's yeah. so many great projects and things going on there yeah. so uh, yeah it's great and that's what it is I think the people yeah. who make these comments they yeah. never they never actually travel to these places yeah. never no. experience never see them but and they're always so seeing the, the worst and they're never looking at the good things yeah. and like the amazing like architecture we've got here and the that's brilliant right, yeah. some you know very famous uh, you know creative talented people and people trying to do some amazing things for community yeah. Yeah. let's yeah. just look at things positively that's a th- I think that's the thing at, uh, we look at so many things at the low yeah and we can't even be there to try and lift it up yeah like as us in here we we here because we want to thank people who yeah. have done things and we don't have much yeah but you know, we want to bring a bit of positivity, here, and yeah. if that's going to do something, something. Yeah. But it is. I mean, just kind sitting here having these conversations, and uh, before we went on out, I was, I was talking about how I, I had a look at your videos and seen some of the other people you've spoken to. Yeah, yeah. It is. It's um, it's great that you're doing this, and you're great. Yeah, you're giving yeah. people a platform and a chance to to talk about what they're doing and what's happening and what's yeah. going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's and so important. And, and, and things I didn't know about. And that's why it is important because you don't know these things are happening and they're happening all the time. Every yeah. day there's something going on. He's sharing things that some of the things we never knew. Yeah, yeah. You know, and some of the experience, Glenn, you, you went through. You know, you met good and bad. But yeah, my so question that for was you. That would be interesting. <laughs> like, what's, what's kind how, of like. How did you manage? Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, like, yeah. there must be some. Being there, there must be some people that you perhaps didn't agree with things that were going on, or there might have been yeah. something that you, an experience that you thought actually this is not for me. Was there ever a moment where you thought this is not a great day? Let's put it this way. Let's put it this way. Who gave you the hell out of you? Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm, I can say the the experience was, was yeah. positive all the while. Yeah, um, I can't. I mean, it's, it's going back a few years now. It's eight Surely years, there must so. be one, um, I mean, we had the experience with the, the guy making a comment about my beard, assuming I'm a Muslim. Yeah. Um, and quite often, yeah, when you went to Berry, it was, um, 
you ask, oh, where are you from? Oh, yeah. I'm from Ipswich. No, wh- where are you really from? Oh. <laughs> no, I'm from Ipswich. I, I, can so. I tell you, I live with this on a very regular basis. And my husband is is um, a quarter he, Beijing. No, 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 no. Claire, Claire, and Claire, his husband is brown. Yeah. But wherever we go, where are you from? Where are you from? England. Yeah. I was born there. No, but where are you from? I am from England. That yeah. is where I'm from. Yeah, we, we have this frequently. Yeah. yeah. So um, just, I, had I can't believe people still ask that question, but yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. So that was, um, it's strange enough, it's like these incidents happen each time I went to Bury St. Edmund. Yeah. Was that thing. But uh, no, uh, on the whole, I. Um, <laughs> Yay! <laughs> on, on the whole, it was a positive experience. Yeah, yeah. I haven't yeah. really got anything negative or no. any, anything really bad that, that happened. I'm, oh, okay. I'm just glad. I feel honoured that I got a chance to do it. It's great because in in the town hall, you have a a picture on the wall of all the mayors going back oh. to like 1836. And you'll right. always and it's just be there. Yeah. Me. Yeah. Is that the pose? No, no, oh no, <laughs> that would have like been brilliant. A I, uh, <laughs> like a superhero sh- landing. Yeah, I should have done that. Yeah. Oh my god, they should have like alternative ones. Oh, yeah. The serious versus like. <laughs> oh yeah, please, please. That would be brilliant. Oh, I'd love that. Well, <laughs> but I had a little game. I wanted to do a little game. Yeah. It's very short. Are you sure? Very short. Yeah. Um, Are you serious? <clears throat> really, really short. It's like, um, okay. is this real or fake? Really on this, Lynn? I, I, I just, never, I just I never, fancied you. She didn't tell me. Oh, okay. <laughs> you, this you're is, always this surprised. This is calling kettle, this guy. I never know what he's going to say. <laughs> okay, so it's, it's very free, random. Free it, it? <laughs> oh, sh- oh, sh- oh, sh- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is basically, is it real or is it fake? So, um, right, okay. It's just a bit random. So dogs have about three times the taste buds as cats do. True or false? True. True. That is true. Dogs have oh, yeah. 1,700 taste buds and yeah. cats only have 470. Come on, Glenn. Okay. Well <laughs> done. We've done it. Well done. <laughs> Hot water can freeze faster than cold water. True. The oh, you seem to be very confident about that. <sighs> Hold on. But you said true. Yeah, what do you think? I don't know. You have to say one or the other. Hot water can freeze faster than cold. True I or false? Okay, I'll go with the mayor. Okay, you're going to go through. I'm going to go with the mayor. It's, it's correct. It's correct. It's a phenomenon, apparently, yes. but it's on. referred to, and I can't, ex- I can't bring it on. describe bring it. How do, do you, you re- how do you, how do you say this? You you probably struggle with, like me because you're dyslexic. But M P E M B A. Is it silent M? Pemba effect. But don't ask me I how. Don't know. I do remember <laughs> hearing it before. The kind of yeah. This, my, my head, it's I called the used, Pember effect. I had useless information. <laughs> in there. It's crazy. <laughs> I just, it just stays Sh- around. I don't we all? Don't we have yes. some, all have a bit of useless information? I struggled. Yeah. How to say your last name? Okay. I really struggled. What's your last name? Chis- it, uh, Chis- Glenn Cheese. Cheese? No. Chis- Ch- no. <laughs> Glenn Cheese. No. Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wrote. I wrote it, it down. It's pronounced Chisholm. I mean, I, I, Chis- I uh, but that's C H I S H O L. He knows his own name. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Chisholm. Oh, I struggled. Cheese. That's brilliant. Have you ever been called I, I, Glenn I, I, Cheese I, I, before? I, I, I mean, I've, I've been called various things. <laughs> <laughs> I did have someone. Um, I, someone read it with um, like a Z in it, so it's like Fucking Chisam. Me. Like wow, yeah, that's cool. Jazz, cool. jazz hands. Yeah. I love that. Chazam. <laughs> <laughs> but that could sound like that, Glenn. Yeah. I tell you what, I've been struggling. I even ask, yeah. um, you know, the, you go to your mobile phone and you put the, everything to make the sound come out. Oh, you're joking, I couldn't yeah. get it right. You really? I you put a lot of yeah, effort I've, in. I even wrote it down here. So, but you still went with I'm trying to pronounce it, yeah, <laughs> despite just waiting for Glenn to tell I, you. I said, you know what, Glenn cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Glenn. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> my, my apologies. If, I, you, I if you were a type of cheese, what would you be? Um, um, I, I would definitely be um, cheddar. Parmesan? Ah. Parmesan! <laughs> no! Why would you be cheddar? That, that's nice. That's, <laughs> that's, that's taste nice. Cheddar, cheddar's oh. just like generic though. It's, and you're not. You're not like, is it? Parmesan is strong and exotic. Oh, it's and really uh, expensive. He's strong. <laughs> he looks strong as well. I like no, it. That's, that's, I like that's it. wrong. That, that's I don't wrong. know what I'd be. 
Because I, I <laughs> love Stilton, but I don't want to say I'd be Stilton because I'd be really smelly. I, yeah. I really didn't think when I woke up today I'd be talking about what type of cheese I No, <laughs> to be fair, I had no idea. So I just like to say that that's, um, yeah, you definitely um, brought different things. Into my, my uh, uh, today, yeah. Random is my middle name. Yes. Uh, we, uh, welcome to the platform. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's go with another. Yeah. Right, Sunsets okay. on Mars are green. False. Yeah, you seem very confident about I'm that. Yeah, false. False. Oh. So if they're not, then what it's colour do you think they would be? Red planets. They're, yeah, red. red. But actually they're blue. Oh. oh. Mm. I don't know why. But they're always... In the NASA, they always saw a scene with reddish. The red planet, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like wow. reddish, uh, yeah, yeah, brownish yeah. kind of... I suppose the sunset itself might be different. Oh. Yeah. Probably with the gases and things, or I don't know, whatever it's, ref- whatever it's reflecting. Probably the atmosphere of reflection, yeah. yeah How yeah. did they come up with that? I don't know. I don't think they made it up. I've got to do a research on that. Snakes do not have eyelids. That's tricky. True. You don't think they do? No. I don't think so. You don't think they do? Yeah. That is correct. Oh, I had to, instead I had to. they've got <laughs> something called a brill, which is a transparent, immovable disc shape scale that covers each eye. I had the picture of a snake's face in my head. I was sitting did there. It, going, did okay, it, what's it, a snake look like to try and yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, Glenn, he thought we were gonna talk about politics all the time. <laughs> <laughs> we know nothing. No, we it's know it's nothing. Great. It's great to be able to <laughs> <laughs> I think I've got two more. I think I've right, got two more. Yeah, go so on. fingerprints, which you'll be quite interested in. Yeah. So you're looking at like he's looking into um, learning how to do lie detector that forensics. Stuff. The fingerprints deposited on paper don't last longer than a couple of years. True. I think that's true. False. Fingerprints can actually last forty years or more on porous surfaces. Okay. What? Yeah. But. Actually, on paper, three more. yeah, 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 forty years. Yeah, I mean, this is um, well because years who ago. Who knows if I'm really but years ago they used to do. It's not paper. They I, I don't remember. Oh yeah, you should know this, Glenn. Oh, <laughs> it's amazing. That's just rude. <laughs> <laughs> No, not, not in that way. Are you saying that I've often been fingerprinted? Uh, no. <laughs> I don't know if you were saying, are you old? You should know this because it's from no. years and years uh, ago. Because, because uh, years ago. In, in the 1800s when you were a young man, Glenn. You <laughs> <laughs> surely, surely you remember that time. <laughs> Why can't you say but, the, but, the, uh, but, the, but then they used to sign... Um, all the documents, not on paper, isn't it? What was it then? That was uh, kind of like... Um, a different kind of texture. I um, don't know. Talking about like papyrus in the something like not, that. Not that. Uh, yeah, but, but we're not. I don't think we're talking about that long ago. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. We've had paper. I'm going for, back to the we've future. We've had paper for quite. Back to the future. Yeah. Back right then. The past. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pa- paper's been around for for a little while. For it's a little while, a, isn't yeah. it? Just a few yeah. years. Yeah. Okay. One more. Okay. Oh, no, we, hang on, because there's one that I think links quite well. So let's get okay. this one. Oh, so. In Canada, a cat once ran for mayor. True. A cat? Mm. That was a terrible sound. No, but a cat. That's true. In in America, there's been a dog which has been mayor before. Ah, this is made up. So in Canada with a cat. So you think it's false? I I think think it's it's false. I think it's false. It's true. No. His name was Tuxedo Stan. And he ran in Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. And he but ran can, on the tuxedo can, party how platform. How can they let this, though? Ra- to raise awareness about stray cat problems. There he is. Oh, my tuxedo goodness. Tuxedo stand. Tuxedo stand. Tuxedo stand. But how can they... That's who you're up against. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> on, that, a cat. on a list of, of favorite, people's favourite men, it's Glenn... And there's a cat. And there's a cat. And, cat and he's doing this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> his picture, if he had opposable thumbs, there would have been a difference. He would have done that. Yeah, so. definitely. <laughs> but you did, you, you, you did surprise us with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't believe it. Oh. Canada do some crazy things, though, don't they? They're a bit of, bit of a, very, a very open-minded country. Yeah. They're very, I don't know, accepting of lots of 
various but things. Like I said, I've, I've, I did read that there was a, a dog in America which was a mayor. As well. a I dog. think he ran two elections by back to back. A oh. dog in America. Yeah. 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 America um, they. Um, what are the rules about being mayor? Surely you have to be able to speak. Apparently not. <laughs> it's what it, maybe there's this some kind of like I don't know communication device that they can go touch this one if you agree or touch this one if you don't and maybe yeah. i don't know it seems but then, insane Claire, <coughs> working as a mayor how did you find it though to work with other politicians it was it was fine like like i, I said earlier on we had the whole the political neutrality thing um so politicians uh, of different political shades i like to think that i treated him with respect during that time yeah. we yeah. managed to to move forward and uh, because we as issues. normal people normal <laughs> yeah, I'm just nobody you know we we tend to find politicians they they lie a lot yeah <laughs> do you do you do you vote yes yes I'm, I'm very passionate about politics still I'm, I'm no longer a councillor I stepped down um, uh, four years ago I think it is now yeah yeah, yeah. And but I'm I'm still interested in politics and what's going on nationally and locally. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, I think it's is the whole situation we've had with um, certain MPs and, and prime ministers. Yeah. Uh, kind of making it seem that everyone lies and everyone is out for their own self interest, but that's not the, the truth. Yeah. And politics, especially locally. Yeah. People who get involved as a local council, you do it because you want to make a difference yeah. in that's your right. community. Yeah. That's um, reassuring. So. We we are we we're not all the but same. And we're not all. They n they never come up with the straight answer. They never give you a straight answer. But it's interesting uh, to hear that you're saying actually that you can trust these people, it's particularly locally. Yeah, you can trust these people. What about national then? I don't know nationally. Uh, national, what would you I mean, think? I've, I've I have become uh, like disengaged with yeah. politics on a national scale. It's it's been horrendous to watch what's happened with the the country and some of the. Some of the rhetoric, which is so divisive, um, um, the what the the, the rhetoric, you people What's who are so uh, Rishi Sunak's <coughs> recent speech about um, benefits, yes, and almost portraying disabled people as a um, as a, a scapegoat, basically, uh, yeah. uh, portraying yeah. as all as welfare cheats and saying yeah. about how yeah. people milk in the system. Where yeah. I've I've been through the system and it's hard. It's yeah. very hard. And, and the process is long. Yeah. And as someone who, was, yeah. who yeah. was newly disabled and dealing with those issues um, and trying to go through the process, it, it nearly broke me. Yeah. It, it yeah. really, really pushed me over the edge. So I know how hard it is. So this continually so, yeah. portraying disabled people as somehow yeah. sponges. Oh. You know, that, that, that's that, wrong, that, isn't that's it? That's what I find yeah. Do you know what? There's a very small minority of people out there that may be... You know, I don't think you should tar everyone with the same brush because no, there's, no. it's so difficult to yeah. get anything. You know, similar to you, my stepfather had cancer and just getting a disabled badge for the later stages of him going through this stage four cancer was just a nightmare. It yeah. is. And like you know? I've, I've got my own personal, but I've spoken <coughs> to other people as well who've, who've gone through it. And it is, it is hard and it is soul crushing. But and to have people yeah. somehow say that we've... We've got an easy and we're milking the system. Is, the the is thing is, what I like about this now, what yeah. um, Glenn, what he's saying, because he's been out there yeah. without disability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he has disability. Now, if I'm, a, I'm I hope I put it in the right way. Yeah. And now you know both sides. Yeah. How it's like to be in that situation. Yeah, yeah. It, it is. And also, I mean, I, I help people go through... Um, welfare forms and yeah. go through the program. When I was a counsellor, I used to support people do, doing yeah. that. And so uh, it wasn't like I was coming in this completely blind and not knowing how the system works. No, yeah. no. But even with my prior knowledge and my experience, it was still oh. soul-destroying. But, yeah. that's a, that's a, but that's a problem, El. Yeah, they say to, to, okay, to us, they say, we want to assist you. Yeah. But all the time they make the forms... They make it really difficult. Difficult. Yeah. For, not even difficult, but for you... The, the forms are so hard, not even hard, confusing. Yeah. They can be. To make you yeah. to be away from the platform of getting help. Here's an yeah. example. Um, I hope that's going to deter you from asking for some money. Or one, of, one of the forms had to be filled <coughs> in by hand. Yeah. And I explained to him that because of my disability, um, I haven't got full dexterity in my hands. So yeah. I can't write properly. So I yeah. said I wouldn't be able to fill it in by, by hand. Can I do it electronic? Because I can tap away a few words on a, yeah. on a thing. 
and they That's were like, fair enough. no, it's not electronic. It has to be written by hand. Okay. And so um, I once again explained, well, I can't write it by hand. How am I supposed to do this? And I'm like, well, get someone else to write it for you. So brilliant. I had to go to, s- luckily, Citizens Advice Bureau were really supportive. And yeah. they, oh, brilliant. Um, I said what I wanted yeah. to read, and they read it out. Yeah, me, that's brilliant. Oh, that's brilliant. But, but yeah, again, they're s- what they're saying to you is they're, they're essentially saying, look, go to someone else, hoping that you've got someone in your life yeah. or you know where to reach out to people and just go and ask them to do it. Exactly. I mean, I'm, that's, that's I'm, just yeah. I'm fortunate that crazy. I've, I've got a support network <laughs> yeah. and also I know where to go for help. But there's some people who are not in no a situation, idea. so they would have just been, been stuck there. Or just yeah. not bothered yeah. and yeah. then have to I live without the people, support yeah. and the help yeah. and just keep struggling. Do you work now then? Um, no, so I'm, I'm technically medically retired because of the, the extent of my um, yeah. my disability. But what I do is I am a trustee on a couple of organisations. Okay. So oh, right. yeah. I'm a trustee for IHAG, which works around homelessness. Okay. Oh, wow, yeah. that's amazing. And also with ISCRI, which is about um, equality and fighting racism. So yeah. oh. These are things which I'm very... Oh, hello. Passionate, passionate about. about. Passion. So, yeah. um, I've, I couldn't just sit there. I wanted to do something... Um, to still be able to feel like I was co- able yeah. to contribute, yeah. and these are areas which um which I I know yeah. and which I'm keep your mind about, going so. as yeah. well. Uh, keep uh, you talk- doing something that's talking positive. about racism. If I may just um, get an opinion, yeah. How do you <coughs> feel with this uh, movement called the Black Life Matters? I think it, it came out of necessity. Really, I feel that um, over the years, I've, I was born in this country. I've, yeah. I've lived here for 51 years. Yeah. And um, as a child, um, during the 70s and 80s, we faced uh, the NF. I had racist graffiti. I, yeah. got, I got spat at and had all, all oh. kinds of racism. And for a while, it felt like it had gone away. Right. Yeah. And um, then when we saw what happened in America and uh, the, the kind of awareness around the, the structural yeah. inequalities there, yeah. and it kind of awakened something here. And it's, it's like... We've been saying it for a long time. People have been talking about the fact that yeah. in certain areas, you look at with like being um, childbirth. Yeah. If you're a black mother, you're more likely to, to lose your child and to die during childbirth. Yeah. It's, it's Is this because of the lack of like um, blood donors and there's, there's matching? All, there's all kind of gym. issues that are around that. But the thing is that <coughs> it feels like the organisation hasn't bothered to find yeah. out. Okay. Yeah. Deal with ah, okay. And so like they're pushing um, it aside a bit. Yeah, and it's it's like institution, institutional racism within organisations yeah. and racism, um, just from ignorant people. Yeah. Yeah. And we've been talking about it for a long while, and I felt like we were ignored. So it was good to be able to to be able to speak up and for people to say, yeah. "Look, this is happening. This is why it's happening." Yeah. yeah. But yeah, unfortunately, yeah. it still feels like some people are like jump to the other end of the scale and just moaning about the fact that they, they feel that um, everything is woke. Oh, that's yeah. woke, woke. Everyone that agree with his woke, 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 woke. Yeah, woke. yeah, yeah. When in fact all it is is um, bringing up the, the structural in- inequalities which are there. And, and, yeah. and the just, just going, actually, we, we probably just need to let you know this has been happening for a very long time. It and, and, it's yeah. exactly. and, and we're just letting <coughs> you know it's happening. Exactly. You, you Talk, didn't know. Talking about <laughs> our, our lived experience and what we've done. And that, that's one of the yeah. things I found so patronising. When people were stepping up and saying, mm. look, this is what I've experienced in my life. This is what I've had. This is what I've faced. Yeah. And then someone turn around and say, "Yeah, but that's not really racism." Yes, uh, it is. Like, yeah, like we had it with the whole Diane Abbott situation yeah. with the guy who made those comments, and there are people who are actually coming out and sort of saying, "Diane, yeah, um, but, but Diane Abbott, Diane Abbott, doesn't it?" Yeah. So the, a, a the, Tory do, donor said that seeing that, yeah. seeing her makes him want to um, shoot black women, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah, that? yeah. That's yeah, disgraceful. Yeah. So we had yeah. a whole debate around. Well, were his comments racist? Yes, they were. Yeah. We shouldn't be still having this conversation yeah, yeah, about yeah, yeah, yeah. what is and yeah. what isn't racism. We should be having conversations about... That was about a Tory guy saying that, didn't Yeah, yeah Tory yeah. Donald. Yeah. So we, sh- we should be having conversations about how we can move forward, forward. as a society yeah, definitely. and as people. Because yeah. things, have, things, you know, have been really tough. And, and for me, I, like, I'm very ignorant to... Like, because I've never been through you know certain experiences and I'll talk to my husband and he'll tell me that you know even when he started driving at the age of 17 yeah he got pulled over so many times just being in his car I mean I can't even maybe I've been pulled over once or twice maybe it's like a spot check or something like that but and he believes these you know were racist towards him just growing up in a society where actually they saw people of any you know dark skin brown skin yeah. color actually as 
more likely to be criminal. Or, you know, I he really the, felt like yeah. a, he was a bit of a, a victim of, of that. And the same as being, you know, at school, people he'd be name called and, you know, and, and he's only 38, so it's not that long Ooh. ago. You know, we're not that Ooh. far in the past. I think thing that um, mm -hmm. I think it's around about um, when I um, did some of the research and everything, uh, most of 60% uh, of uh, black people, uh, they still feel that NHS is not serving them as good as the other really race like um white people they still fail yeah. okay yeah 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 you know and um again it's for it's me it's really obviously well, it's really um, hard to relate but it's it i've checked it out i've checked it out but um you know those are um could be something that um, yeah. i need to check again to underlining make sure the things that are so happening yeah yeah because they <laughs> they feel they don't get the same treatment as the other person yeah. there, there is a it's a, a like a large historical <coughs> um, basis of of why black people have a mistrust in, in the medical profession but also on the flip side of that the NHS is probably one of the largest employers of um, our, our ethnic minority community yeah. and we're yeah. like the Windrush generation when lots of people first came to the UK a lot of yeah. them found work within the NHS within and yeah. healthcare and yeah. yeah and um, they've they've made an amazing amazing contribution contribution yeah. Yeah. Through, yeah through that way yeah and even so it's now, good to hear that, um, isn't it? It's good to hear that. Inviting people from outside the country, yeah, and that's to so come important. in to assist with, yeah. um, you know, you know, with the healthcare and yeah, everything. Yeah. So I tell you what, I would like to hear your opinion about the uh, Rwanda oh. policy. <laughs> Karma. I just think it's like it sounds like it's made I, up by a child. I can't stand it. I absolutely despise it. I think that it's a ridiculous waste of money financially. Yeah. yeah. Um, the amount of money they've chucked into it. Um, but the mere fact of, you know, I, I find it cruel. It's mental. Unnecessary. And I just can't believe that the amount, the, the courts have turned around and said that it's not a safe place to send people. No. There, there's a reason why. They, they listed f fairly why. Yeah. And I can't believe they've got the situation where Parliament has now gone. Yeah, okay. C circumvented that, so they can write down and say, "Okay, we've legislated this, this straight." You yeah. can't do that. This is a bottle of water. I can't then get a piece of paper and write, "Okay, this is no longer water. This is a bottle of coke." Yeah, that, that doesn't make it true. That doesn't no. mean that this is yeah. now a bottle of coke. Yeah. And that's, that's they've said it's not safe. It's okay. It's safe now. You can go. Yeah. It's, like, it's hang on a minute. What are we ridiculous. doing? And this they whole think it's a deterrent. They think it's going to stop people wanting to flee you know, civil war or to become, come to a safer place. I think it's yeah. going to deter I've, that. I've supported, um, when, when I was supporting homeless people, I yeah. supported um, a, a, Syri a Syrian um, refugee and a, um, an Iraqi refugee. And I've heard their experience of what they went through and um, how they, they ended up here. Yeah. And it's just... We'd all do the it's same. It's mind-blowing. It's absolutely <laughs> horrendous and heartbreaking what they, they have been through. And we as a... a country as a nation we have a responsibility this whole oh what everyone just stay in france why don't they stay here once they <laughs> so why are they saying they want us to just sharp shop and just have no one yeah come here which is what i think some people actually want but this country has been made better from the contribution of yeah. people from, other from other outside and yeah. the cultural differences and yeah. just opening our eyes to the world but, a bit but what I, i'm struggling is they say if i come to your house I treat your house as mine, but other people will come to your house and do us what they like. But yeah. is it good though? In what what way do you, you deal with them, people who just come in? Okay. And deal. So you're playing devil's advocate a little bit. Yeah. And actually. just want to do what they think they okay. can. I think on the whole, people do assimilate and contribute well. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that there are exceptions to every rule, and you do find that there are some people who. Have, um, have broken laws, have, have done disrespectful things. Yeah. Yeah. But then we find that across the board, we find that with people from um, from UK right, right, culture. Yeah, yeah. So exactly. There's always. So, but I think on I think the whole the negative narrative of yeah. trying to push this as this is <coughs> the norm. This is how it is. Yeah. Once again, come into this whole no go area thing where yeah. people say, "Oh, I went to Ipswich Town Centre and 
everywhere I looked, there were foreigners. I, I, I couldn't hear anything. It's, like, <laughs> it's like, no, that's not the truth. And, uh, uh, and that's, that's probably yeah. from someone who hasn't actually bothered to yeah. visit Israel's down south. No. They're just right. going off the, uh, the comment section from yeah, the local yeah, press. Yeah. It's, people's perception and the reality is somewhat different. If someone is continually pushed these narratives and this propaganda by yeah. the Daily Man and other rags, they're going to think that is the truth yeah. if they haven't actually experienced oh, it. But with the town, all the shops are shutting down, though. I think that's everywhere, don't you? Yes, and I think that's a... But why is that? Why? It's a reflection of the, the change. The time. Habits. I mean, lots of people shop online nowadays. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it is. Uh, I want to see a, a, a vibrant... Oh, um, I know, it'd be lovely. Town. Yeah. But also, um, during the summer, I remember going in the town centre and they had a display with big inflatable things. Yeah, and that, was cool. that was cool, that was cool, yeah. I remember, yeah. Si- like, um, because I can't walk so far with uh, things, so quite often if I go into town, uh, I will sit down outside yeah. the town hall. You can and, take and, uh, everything and, like, just around. observing. People watch, and you yeah. see, like, kids running in the fountain, yeah. you see families yeah. walk around together, and um, when there's something happening in the town centre, we had, like, we've had music events. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. When, when my son come and visited me in the summer one time, I went out to something to eat, and we came out, and there was, like, a whole concert going on. Yeah, on, yeah. On and the, sometimes the they put, hill. like, up a cinema, outdoor cinema yeah. in there, don't they? And yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that there's stuff happening. And Quite the Christmas lights, that's a massive event, isn't yeah. it? So there are times yeah. when it is so hustle and a bustle. So that there, is, there is so much stuff happening in the town, but yeah. quite often people um, choose to stick their heads in the sand and, and yeah. not pay attention and not realise. But there, there's some good things happening, good events. I think you're right, though. When it comes to like retail and shopping, it, we're just moving on like you know other countries are, uh, like you know America, and you look at like places like Dubai, they have these outlets, places where there's lots of things in one area so you, we're starting to build those things now and you've got like yeah. the cinema and restaurants and then there'll be like retail shopping around the same and it'll all be people go to this one area where they can yeah. park for free and do everything they need in one place and town might be just become something else in the future like a True. entertainment places where people go to have fun and yeah I mean people are, there's more um, accommodation happening in town so more yeah. people living in town which yeah. It makes sense if, if the shops are going, uh, you want people living here to make use of the shops which are left. But yeah, what they're yeah. they going to do with them shops shutting down? I think everything will go online, won't what it? What they're going to do? What the buildings yeah. have to find another use for them. Yeah. Um, like you say, there's a lot of, lot of accommodation. Yeah. Right. On your opinion on this one, <laughs> how do you. Is it our MP? Is it doing good for us for our town uh, <laughs> just your opinion oh. just your opinion on that one okay so i have to do a caveat that i am yeah. obviously politically um uh, i'm a former labor councillor and former labor wow. labor uh, okay thing, so um oh, right. but um no I, I think that tom hunt has done a terrible job of um pushing this this narrative and uh, rhetoric that we have about um, yeah, he's he's a big fan of the Rwanda scheme. Um, he's very negative wow. about certain communities within right. the, within the town. Um, he also really? outright um, lied in one of his leaflets recently. Right, really? Okay. Uh, yeah, we had a, there was a a situation where we had asylum seekers were being holed up in the Nova Town. Yeah, yeah, and I remember that. There yeah. was um, some people organised a. Protest. The leaflet which out, went out before that was um, like stop these instead of refugees, it read rape refugees, yeah. and it was just nice. v- absolutely vile yeah. uh, oh stuff. No. Um, so a kind of protest was organised, and I actually went along to that kind of protest. And the yeah, whole reason was you. because we didn't want this kind of hate and bigotry, and so we were yeah. there. There were people on the the other side of the road who were the the protesters who were actually doing um, Nazi salutes, oh my shouting God. horrendous Watch. things. And then on the other side of the street, there was um, us there giving support. We were singing songs, and uh, yeah. it was like a, a much more positive vibe. Yeah. yeah. But uh, Tom Hunt, in his leaflet, has said that the the counter protest was in favour of illegal immigration. But that's that's not absolutely that because you were there and you yeah, know that really that's really absolutely favor. untrue. Yeah. He's he's been told this many times, but he yeah. still keeps pushing this this narrative out there because it's, it's a Bec- way of him trying to to appeal to a 
a to everyone, he's a wider over, audience. Yeah. yeah, have you seen him? He's all over Facebook. All yeah, he's talking he's about like housing uh, projects uh, and things that he's going to help to uh, bring to Ipswich to better it. But uh, we, we even so we even send him um, an email. We send lots of emails to him to come, you know, to come to us. Yeah, but he never replies. Mm. And uh, <laughs> I went, I went and see, you know, give them a call, see them, to say, look. This is us. Can you come on platform to you know to explain some of the things? And no reply. No, but that's mm. that's disappointing, but um, not surprising. Yeah, but uh, yeah. So I'm 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 not a fan of some of the things that he's said no. and some of the policies that he's um, he's pushed. And I think it's disappointing because he um, it, it sells the town short. This town has got a proud history of diversity and a proud yeah. history of people from different backgrounds making a contribution. Agreed. And he seems to see that as a negative side really? whereas it's actually a beautiful thing within our town yeah. which, which makes it what it is so who's voting for him then well we'll, we'll see what happens when the, the upcoming election. yeah 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 once once uh, again i I, I, I have to <laughs> declare my bias in that uh jack yeah. abbott who is the labor candidate yeah. is actually a friend of mine yeah um oh. I've, I've known him for, jack for abbott. years oh and, I'd, 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 oh jack yeah i went down to the um, you remember there was a uh, army. I I went yeah, to yeah, send. Yeah, I, I gave them a letter okay. and send them um, and gave my details and email and everything, and uh, yeah, they they haven't replied, but they were welcoming. Oh, yeah. that's good. They were welcoming. That's so good. Um, um, I'm not sure if they're busy, maybe with your contacts. <laughs> 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 yeah, it would be so nice Jack to have Abbott, them. So he's yeah, a, Jack Abbott. So he's yeah. Labour. Yeah, he's, he's, he's Labour candidate. Okay. Oh, okay. Nice. So Oh, All okay. Right, thank we you for know that. somebody. <laughs> you know, it, it's who you know. Yeah. Not and now what we you know. know. You. <laughs> <laughs> right. In in closing, as a young man, how could just to advise a young man like like you, <laughs> you know, what would you say to another young man? What kind of advice? Yeah. yeah. What advice would I? Yeah. yeah. What, what? Um, I suppose if I if I was, for example, if I was talking to my my younger self, if I was yeah. talking to me, um, I would say, be comfortable in your own skin. Um, be comfortable with who you are. Don't try to conform to what other people push on you. Yeah. Be yourself and be true to yourself. Right. And um, just. I like him. Have that, have that confidence and don't have regrets. Don't regret things that you didn't do. Yeah. Just have that confidence to, to go for things and yeah. to, to make a difference. And also, <sighs> just one last thing is that we're, we're not islands by ourselves. We're yeah. all interconnected. We're all interlinked. Yeah. And just when you're looking out for yourself, also look out for others and uh, try oh. and help out vulnerable so people. And uh, just, just play your part. We can't, so we can't change the world um, in one go, but... We can change our little part of the world, our little section that we've got by the actions that we do, and that's, that's what it's about. I love that. Did I you know what we're going that. to ask? I know. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love Put that. Put it so nicely, oh, isn't I it? I love that. Jesus See, that's, Christ. Um, I love that. Yeah, it's, it's, we, we spoke about my dyslexia earlier on. When, right. I, when I was a child and when I was in school, so I was in a, I didn't know how to deal with my dyslexia, and I was put in a, a special unit with people with, with educational yeah. issues, real educational issues. And I had a, a teacher who was like, look, I've, I think that he has dyslexia. Yeah. And he also commented on the fact of my, my oratory skills, my ability to talk. Yeah. yeah. And that was kind of my, my thing. Yeah. And so we're saying about like not trying to put square pegs into round I'm holes. Yeah, yeah. Find your, Other your skills. What you've got. Yeah. So I have a reasonable skill in being able to talk and That's chat amazing. and say things. So yeah, yeah, I've yeah. found different ways to be able to communicate. So being in being within a yeah. being a counselor, being a mayor, um, yeah. being a support worker is, is ways is using my, my verbal communication. Yeah. Skills. yeah, and so that's what I'm good at. I I am even before my injury, I was terrible with my hands. You give me a hammer and some tools, and I couldn't make anything. Oh, oh really? Yeah, horrendous. Yeah, oh, and I'm man. even worse now. So, <laughs> oh, bless you. so different people <laughs> have different skills. It's, it's yeah. like yeah. being able to utilize those skills and do what you're good at. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, well, you're great. And you've really drawn um, me in and you're really interesting to listen to. So thank, thank you very you. much. What thank do you, you think? For joining he us. needs to come back. I'd, and love to, I'd love you to. You're a really interesting guy and I think you've got a lot to give. So it'd no, be I, nice to see I you love, again. I love what you guys are doing and I'd be happy to come back. Uh, thank you oh, very he much. needs to come back. Yeah. Man. <laughs> thank can you I, very much. A high five. High five. <laughs> Let's see what happens. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Oh, thank, thank you thank very you. much. Thank you, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Clan on the house, Elle on the house, <laughs> the team is on the house, and we thank you very much. Thank you guys. Me want my dad, me want my dad, give me some more weed, weed. Me want my dad, give me some more weed. Me want my dad, give me some more weed.